It has been a while since I have been in such a huge crowd. The crowd is obviously amazing. Show me what you got! Pelo going in though. That's a good time to win from this, but it's two coming out now. Make that three for my man. We're playing in London, so if we don't win, like we're not eating. Overpower actually catching Kevin here, waiting for those cooldowns to come back. Oh, Got it. The I've never been to a place where the fans are so enthusiastic about the players. Membi Arena is huge. The crowd was amazing so far. It's really nice. Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, for day two of the European League of Legends Championship Series, coming to you live from London, England. I am Lee D-Man Smith, and alongside me is Trevor Quickshot Henry, and we are here to bring you four more games from the SSC Arena at Wembley. Yeah, and I have to say that as impressive as this venue is, the crowd out there just blew me away yesterday, and I'm sure we're in for more excitement from them as our teams do battle today. But before... We get into today's matches. Let's take a quick look at the LCS big play that had you guys fired up on Twitter yesterday. This one comes in from the Super Hot Crew versus Copenhagen Wolves match and features some aquatic acrobatics courtesy of Yero's Nami. It came in from Kanias and LOL, underscore LOL, whatever you'd like to call him. He said the perfect tidal away from Yero to defend the inhib and single handedly win that team fight for Super Hot Crew. This was your most talked about play. Impaler going in though. Impaler going more towards the front. He wants to cataclysm down. That's a good time to win coming in. And Mima absolutely crapping on them from the back. We'll see the destiny used. Are they going to be able to finish off? Kowtar dodges a bit of damage, but it's two coming out now. Make that three for Mima. What more can I say? My I think Joe said it all. Absolutely <laughs> did. Anyways, guys, remember you can always send your big plays our way on Twitter at LOL Esports. Use that hashtag LCS Big Plays. Now, as we begin our final day of the week five, let's see where the teams currently stand. At the top of the table, it is Alliance. They are sitting pretty right now with nine wins and two losses. And behind them are SK Gaming at seven wins and four losses. Yeah, the rest of the table is full of ties, starting with three teams tied for third, as Fnatic, Millennium and the Super Hot Crew all have six wins and five losses. If you need more information about the schedule, the teams, the players, head over to LOLEsports.com where you can find all of that and much more. Yeah, you can track how the teams are performing on the road to the Summoners Cup. You can even vote on today's matches. Just visit the schedule and give a thumbs up to the team that you think will win. We will be checking in before each game to see how all of you guys voted. And to find out how you can join us back in our Cologne studio to watch us live here for the LCS, just click on the tickets link at the top of the page. And turning from seats to tweets, we'd like you guys on Twitter, no matter where you are, to let us know. Which position in the European LCS do you think has the deepest talent pool and why? This was a tough question to answer, but I think it's mm. mid lane and AD carry. Because it doesn't matter how many good mid laners and ADCs we generate, there's always someone else that can yeah, challenge yeah. the top guys. So just like yesterday, anyone who has their tweets shown on the air today will receive a skin code for Primetime Draven. So be sure to send your answers to us at LOL Esports and use that hashtag LCS. We'll check out your responses and read some of them on air later today. Well, since we are here in London, it seems only fitting that we talk to two British players on the teams. So let's send it over to my fellow Englishman, Joe Miller, who is standing by with Freddie and Impaler. Thank you very much, guys, and welcome to the even more English corner here at Wembley Arena. First of all, Freddie, if I had told you two years ago that you were going to be playing at the Wembley Arena in front of an awesome crowd like this, would you have laughed at me? <laughs> I never expected to play on a stage like this, especially at Wembley, especially in England, in, such, in front of such a big crowd. So yeah, I'm kind of shocked. And definitely an amazing audience that we've got in here. Impaler, I want to ask, ask you a little bit more about Super Hot Crew, because of course you've got another Brit on the team for this week only. 
How's Yero doing? How does his style fit in with the Super Hot crew? Uh, Yero is doing amazing. Honestly, he came here really nervous, but as soon as the crowd got behind him, he's now performing really well and he's going to kick SK's ass later today. So guys, <laughs> you kind of set me up for that one now. So, Freddy, you're going to be taking on the Super Hot crew and of course Impaler later on. It's all about British pride here. Any words for the Super Hot crew before we get into it? Well, I was the first British player in LCS, so I'm going to have to crush Impaler. <laughs> and... <laughs> We have something to prove after our game against Alliance yesterday because that went horribly. So, yeah, we're looking for revenge. Any final words then, Impaler? You've you got to give him something back now, right? I don't know. We've got something special planned and he's really going to feel it later on. Well, we'll find out in a little while. Super Hot Crew versus SK Gaming will be coming up in our second match of the day. Thank you very much, guys. And we're going to send it back over to Demon and Quickshot to get the games underway. Thank you very much, Joe. I think technically Snoopy was the first British player. Is, is Scotland part of Britain? Uh, we try not to think <laughs> so. <laughs> Let's get into the first LCS match, guys. Over to Rocket and Gambit. Rocket have already beaten Gambit, but that was all the way back in day one of the summer split. And until last week, it was their only victory. However, last week, of course, Rocket managed to pick up two wins. One of them was by forfeit, the other was by convincingly beating Super Hot crew. Rockout's coach Veggie is now staying in the gaming house with the team and it appears to have helped. Yesterday Rockout took down Millennium in a fairly one-sided game and while it was slow it resulted in Rockout securing a much needed win. Yeah, so in yesterday's game against Millennium, Rockhead really took their time to finish that yeah. game. They were led by Overpower on LeBlanc and Seliva on Corky. And together, they kept destroying Millennium in the very few fights that did happen. But it took a super long time to really force objectives. That was Rocket's main problem. Even though they did secure the win, it was far from being convincing, as it seemed like a very difficult game to close out. Five Dragons, three Barons, a 47-minute game. Rocket need to be much more decisive if they plan on beating anyone else in the league. Well, so far this season, Gambit have struggled to find any sort of steady form. And unfortunately, the team was controlled by Fnatic yesterday. Gambit struggled against the invert coordinated invades, actually, a map-based play from Fnatic yesterday. And while Nick landed some fantastic spears on Nidalee, it wasn't quite enough. No, it really wasn't. I felt Gambit had a little bit of a weird team composition that in my mind struggled to find a lot of natural synergy. I'd like to see them something, I'd like to see them picking something a little more fluid in their composition today. And they should look to punish Rockat's indecisive play style if the game runs long. But I do want to say that Gambit actually really surprised me because they made Fnatic work very hard to close the game out. It was only their early game that will need to be better to really make this game work against Rockat. Possibly the youngest looking Gambit side I've seen as well. That's for sure. So, we're going to get the starting lineups on your screens. It is blue side for Rocket today. Zazas will be in the top lane. Yankos in the jungle. Overpower is the mid lane. Selavar the AD carry. And Vanda on support. And on the red side, it is Gambit with Kabushad in the top lane. Lolex in the jungle. Nick playing mid. Fury in AD carry. And Heva playing the support role. Well, before we hit the rift, let's take a look at the voting from LOLEsports.com, where it looks like 55% of you actually think Gambit will win this game. 50-50 game. Rocket have been somewhat questionable in recent weeks, and Gambit, you know, they put up a, a decent mid to late game effort against Fnatic yesterday, so we'll see how this match plays out. I definitely think the jungle role is going to be uh, very important for both of these teams. Lolex is Evelyn was good once he got going. But it took him a little while to get going yesterday. Well, as we mentioned yesterday as well, the pressure is very much on Rockat because Rock Gambit, last time they had to use substitutes, they went one on one. Yeah. So it's possible they could take down Rockat. Rockat have been shaky themselves. Champ Select will be getting underway in a moment. What are we expecting from these guys? Of course, we saw Nick had to secure that Nidalee yesterday. I also think, uh, besides the Nidalee and the jungle focus, is that uh, Lolex is a, a Leeson main. He's got hundreds and hundreds of games played in Challenger with Lee Sin as a yeah. champion. And yes, Jankos can play Lee Sin, but I do think he's slightly more effective on other champions. His Lee Sin is Evelyn at a higher tier. So for Rocket, I think it could be a very strategic game to ban out a jungler like Lee Sin, take that away from Gambit, see if they reply with an Evelyn or an Elise. And if Gambit focus on those jungle bans, it allows Overpower to maybe get his hands on Ziggs. That's another big, very important champion for Rocket, and is very effective in them when they've picked up wins in the past. I was also interested to see how the AD carry works out, because Sullivan's generally very picky about which AD carry he plays. Here we go, picks and bans underway for the first LCS game of the day. Aurelia being taken away from Cabo Shard. I believe that was also banned away from him yesterday by Fnatic. 
Second ban is Cassidy in red side ban. Standard ban there, honestly, nothing surprisingly coming out there. Zix being taken away from Nick. That does surprise me. That makes me think Rocket have got something else that they want to pick as a first pick champion, and they don't want to run the risk of losing that Ziggs away. Overpower is still one of my favorite Ziggs players, probably uh, just behind Kerp, I think, at the moment. And unfortunately, not going to see it. No focus on those jungle champions lane. Uh, yeah, Lisa, Elise, Evelyn are still up and available if Yanklas or Lolex want to play it, and we do know they play all three of those. Top lane focus at the moment with that Jax gone. Kale still out there as well from a band. There is the Lee Sin band that's going to get taken away from Lolex. Will Kale get banned out? Or oh, I think if it sneaks through, it's going to get first picked by Rucka. Oh, that's it's, it's a consideration. The, the problem is then, what do they lose in reply? If they do go for the likes of a first pick Kale, they run the risk of losing the likes of Thresh, losing the likes of the, the premier jungler that's left open. In my head, I think Elise or Evelyn maybe is a ban and then the alternative first pick, but there's still two junglers available. Well, they go for Brahm. Not something we've seen Vander playing. He's a big Thresh player. What will they go with? Zazas on your screen now. Is the man to make the choice for his team. Big discussion over this one. They know there's a lot available. Yeah, Rocket as a team have also put a lot of emphasis mm. in the past in like first picking and uh, early picking AD carries because of how reliant Seleva is in uh, specific champions. At the beginning of the split and the end of last split, we've seen uh, target bans towards Seleva and Rocket to put him on an uncomfortable champion. But yesterday, he played very, very well with Corky. He had a good performance. I believe he went unkilled 9 0 three of memory serves. So Seleva's going to have that in his back pocket. We also know Rocket as a team to run that Lulu top lane. Zazas has run Lulu top lane uh, a number of times and is continuing to do so. It is a trend that is slowly dwindling away, but we do still see it. And I think maybe a little more in Europe than most other regions, uh, comparatively speaking. Well, Evelyn or Elise, Yankos will be certainly comfortable. It's down to Lolex to make the choice which way is going to force his hand. Evelyn currently being hovered over and Obviously discussing what is available, do you think there's the likes of Twitch out there? Lucian would be the focused one for Seleva, that's his favorite AD carry. I'm happy you bring Twitch up, because Twitch is a champion that Ooh. Rocket have banned. In the first six games that they played at the Summer Split, they banned Twitch away regardless of which side they were on. And considering how popular and how prevalent Twitch was in the opening of the Spring Split, uh, Summer Split rather, it, it was a strategy that was interesting to see. So Twitch definitely not going to be on the cards for Gambit. And if Seleva locks it in, it will be a surprise pick because as a team, Rocket have not necessarily shown much interest in that particular direction. I'm just noticing how serious Rocket are in picks and bans. Normally we see them joking around at this stage. You know, Yankos was all laughing away. But there was a lot of focus on their faces. I know they've got a lot to lose, but they are trying to work their way back up that table. And they've actually been handed quite a few opportunities by the fact that everybody's beating everybody else. And they're quietly going away their win. They actually have the highest win streak in the LCS right now, which is three wins. Three games on the trot. They're climbing their way back up the ladder just a little bit. And it's something that Rocket may want to continue doing. They don't want to lose the momentum that they've built up, regardless of the fact that it's two wins and that forfeit victory. You have predicted and talked about the Kale pick. It is something that is very, very effective at this level of play. And what I like about Rocket's composition is they have got two, in case of emergency, press R, save teammate buttons. You've got Lulu that can save teammates. You've got Kale that will save teammates. You've even got Thresh that in the right positioning can pull somebody out of a bad position. So whatever Seleva uh, wants to lock in in terms of his AD carry, he could go something risky like Twitch. He's got save buttons. I'd like to see some more protection from Gambit. They've got uh, a Cogmo built in, so late game scaling is going to be very effective. And also, whatever Gambit want to run in this top lane, are they going to go with a Shivana? Do they want to run a Trundle, you know, buy some time? Uh, mitigate and slow down the rest of the enemies, or are they going to go aggressive? I mean, there's a number of options they can go for. It looks like aggression will be the choice. It's going to be Aatrox in that top lane, and Heva, who played Zyra yesterday, worked out pretty well. Held out, stalled out Fnatic for a long period of time, and it wasn't quite to be for him in that game, but not a bad choice. This is the last time we saw support Zyra, oh, I'm trying to think, MYM, we used to run it a hell of a lot. Yeah. I can't think of anyone this season. We've seen it a few fringe cases this split, but not frequently. I remember N-Rated actually played it in week one or week two. Um, the thing that I liked about Heva Zyra yesterday is the threat of Stranglethorns under turrets is what stalled the game out. Fnatic were not willing to overcommit to fights or push through the Zyra because they would have to invest a whole lot. And if it went a little bit awry, they would have been in a lot of trouble. And this is a similar situation. Aatrox can jump in with the support of Evelyn. You put a Stranglethorns down and that's a lot of threat and protection for Cogmore, assuming they're up and alive. 
Yeah, it's going to be in Italy, I think, for Gambit as well. We can see Lucian and Elise, no surprises, falling back to what they know, Rocket here, and they actually have a very good team combo. My impression, Gambit, will they fall to... Let's, let's see. Let's, okay, let's, let's touch it on Rocket very quickly. It's going to be that. He was just having fun. Touch on Rocket very quickly. Look at that smug. Look at the right smile. Yeah, that, was, that yeah. was very smug. So Elise locked in for Vanda, uh, rather for Jankos, by Vanda. That is what we expected, is the sort of holy trinity of junglers. The one thing that I think Rocket <laughs> are... <laughs> Not doing themselves any favors with the crowd, these guys. The one thing that I think Rocket are lacking a little in this particular composition is uh, safe engage. They're going to be relying on single target skill shots from Thresh or from Elise, or alternatively Kale just running all the way in and getting that wild growth down. For Gambit, there is a clear initiation with Aatrox on the front line, with Evelyn flanking, and with the potential and the threat of that Strangle Thorns. But again, the key for Gambit is making sure they don't fall behind early. If Aatrox or Cog don't hit their power spike in the right time, and if they're not on the same page with their flanking engagements, it can go backwards very quickly because of all of the saves that Rocket have on their team. <laughs> Nearly locked in, so no surprises there. Gambit going with fairly similar comp to what they ran yesterday. And as you mentioned, Rocket, they have a very strong composition. I had a feeling if that KO was allowed available, but Zazas on Lulu as well. A lot of damage, a lot of range poke, and actually a lot to deal with those spears. Yes, that's the truth. You've got shields, you've got heals, you've got movement speed, so there is a lot of abilities to dodge, dip, duck, dive, whatever is required to get away from those javelin tosses. But again, for me, it's all about the flanks and the timing on Gambit's engages, because if they do get a good Evelyn Agony's Embrace into a knock-up from Aatrox, which could theoretically lead to a knock-up from Zyra, there's the potential of completely zoning out multiple members of Rocket. You can kill them before, before they even land, if you time it correctly. But this is a group of solo queue players. Whether or not they have that level of cohesion and coordination needs to be seen in-game. Well, now that the lineups are locked in, do you guys at home still think Gambit will win? Tell us who has the advantage by tweeting hashtag ROCWIN or hashtag GMBWIN to LOL Esports, and we'll, of course, check the results once the game is underway. What do you feel overall? How is your, where's your heart tugging you on this one? I think both teams have got a lot of things uh, going for them. This isn't a clear cut, I prefer X composition. Mm. The only concern that I have for Gambit is how do they deal with wild growth and intervention. And can they make use of their mid-game power that Aatrox and Nidalee will afford them to circumnavigate the Lulu and Kale late-game power? Because mm. if Lulu gets to that very late-game point where she's got all that utility, all the movement speed, and Kale has got the ability to maybe go full Mimer we and saw it destroy from people yeah, yeah, exactly. and beat the crap out of people, yeah. it is definitely a scary potential. 13 to 5 yesterday, Mimer on Kale. Let's see if Overpower can match. That as game one of the European LCS gets underway here in London. And it is Rocket starting out as the blue team up against Gamut playing as the red team. So let's see if they have any level one play, any tricks in their bag. Gamut are grouping here and they did actually go fairly aggressive. They went to get those deep wards against Fnatic yesterday. And it seems they're going to try and do the same against Rocket. Yeah, and the, the one thing I want to highlight is how effective Nick's spears were. Um, yesterday against Fnatic. If Rocket take another 45, 47 minutes to try and push for a victory, Nick Spears will be doing even more. So uh, we need to keep a close eye on Nick. He does have the ability to change the flow and change the outcome of games. And Gambit with a very heavy engage, not necessarily uh, finding anyone yet, but here they come from the sidelines. They jumped in. Oh, they pile on and he flashed out Zazas there. So that's one flash down. Can they get on towards Vanda? Vanda, no. Instead, Rocket are going to try and turn this one back around. They're going aggressive in towards them. Dead Center's thrown out, does not land. Lulex taking some damage around the back there. Salivar in between them, and Rocket in between a rock and a hard place. Vanda flashes away. Kabashar diving in again. Ignite being used on them. It's back and forth. Salivar trying to pull some damage around the side. Gamut not really sure which way they're going here. Kabashar with that Bloodwell available. Ignite down. It's going to get forced out. Bloodwell will pop. He can yeah. jump, he can jump. He's going to try and jump across the side, but he's going to jump straight across the rock, and Salavar is there, lands himself first blood. So Gambit overcommit to the invade. They got completely surrounded, and yes, Rocket got first blood, but look at all of the summoner spells. Flash on Zazas down, flash ignite down for Overpower, flash ignite down for Vanda. 
if Lolex can punish the laning phase for the next few minutes, there are enough summoner spells blown on Rocket's side to potentially even out that kill score. The only thing I didn't like about Rocket's, um, you know, sort of counter, counter invade was the fact that they were so indecisive. Zazz's flashed and ran away. Then Vandal got caught in the red pit. Then he had to flash away early. It felt like the uh, team decision was somewhat delayed. They end up coming out ahead in terms of killing gold, but it's a summoner spells that could dictate the next five minutes of gameplay. I've had a lane switch around here, and also Zaz has been given the blue buff. So Yankos with that red as well, so trading buffs between the two. So we'll see whether Zazas goes down towards our bottom. Of course, Zazas with the blue buff probably could keep Fury and Heaver at bay quite simply in that 2v1. Yeah, I think so too. Um, with the glitter lances and, and the wave control that he has, he could dictate the tempo of the lane. But because Rockhead have initiated the lane swap, you see how aggressive they're playing. They're going to have the support of their mid laner and uh, AD carry if they need to. And oh, that's a good hook. Death Sentence comes in. Yankos was not ready to follow that through, though. Didn't have Cocoon leveled up. They went for the Spider early on. Overpowering this mid lane up against Nick. We'll see how this one works out. The Nick's going to have his work cut out here. He's going to have to farm hard and fast up against the Kale. So there's two things that Rocket are doing against an Evelyn, which I like. Number one, they've initiated the lane swap. So they can force Lolex's hand to either defend the tower or obviously go for the opposite tower dive on Zazus. In addition to that, because of the numbers advantage, Yankos is declaring ownership of the top half of the jungle. So he's put some deep wards down, he's got the support of his top lane, and he's trying to move around. Notice how Lolex and Kabashan are looking for the dive, because this is one of the only options available. They've jumped on Zazas. He's going to jump on him, and he can just walk away from that one. Good timing by Zazas. His spider sense is tingling, manages to put the ward down the try, but just as they come around, it does mean that the dragon's going to get started off very early on for Gamma in here. Would be a four-minute dragon if they can take it down, and there's no reaction from Rock. No, they can't be. They, they simply don't have the numbers to contest this. So this is obviously the risk of going blue. So, oh, this is so oh, brave for Zazus. He could cause some serious problems. If he gets caught by any CC, he's going to go down. Glitterlance on towards him, potentially. Spears coming across the side there. There is a Glitterlance. Lonex tanking it up, and Zazus now in trouble. Remember, he has that blue buff. He's got nowhere to run. And that was a gift for Fury, honestly. Not too sure what he was hoping to achieve. Yeah, there was not enough support. Even if Overpower had made it in, they maybe could have traded one for one, but they still would have lost the dragon at the end of the day. So Gambit going to secure themselves a kill. Note, it was Zazus that burned his flash on the invade early. Not having that flash means he gets caught out, but he was very overextended anyway and probably should have been a, a little more cautious in that role. So Gambit with an immediate reply. And he teleported onto a ward there, not the tower. So that's a 300 second instead of 200 second cooldown. So, and it got spotted out, of course, in the moment he came in. So he got literally nothing from it. So Rocket. A little bit shaky despite getting that first blood locked in. Top lane, of course, we saw Kabashad teleport into top there to make sure he could clear out that wave. Goes straight back, gets himself a second Doran's blade now. Makes his way back towards the top lane. So Gambit, we mentioned it yesterday against Fnatic. If they can do well in the lane phase, essentially they are a solo queue team right now. They can cause problems for a team. We saw it against Fnatic. Fnatic struggled to close the game out despite dominating the first 20 minutes. That game went on for 48 minutes. Yeah, it really did. And it's all on Gambit, you know, to make positive plays. That dragon is one. And diving on Sullivan Vander looks like another. He's got his blood well back available, feeling very confident on Aatrox here. Kabashad Zaz has caught out. Grasping root. Good slow from Fury as well, but he chooses not to follow it up. Instead, he wants to get out CS, but Zaz has He's having a lot of problems down this bottom lane. That's such good damage from Heva and Fury. Just very good positioning from Heva to allow the Grasping Roots to lock Zazas down. And it, it was Heva that were, I believe was, in my opinion, was very instrumental in yesterday's delay. You know, his, his threat. Oh, Lolex is fun Vanda. Oh, he just walked in. I think he did an attack move on towards him. He gets the play down. Is the Ignite going to be enough to take him down? Vanda gets a return kill. So, so close. That Ignite had just become available a few seconds prior. And I thought it was Lolex fanning Vine finding Vanda, and it was the crowd control from Vanda that actually allowed him to get the kill. So Rocket, another very quick reply, and it looks like it's tower defense uh, for both of the respective junglers. Lolex was trying to just hold out in that top lane, and unfortunately got caught out. These are level six mid laners, keep that in mind. Oh, Nick going straight in towards Overpower. Overpower does have intervention, remember he could have turned his damage back around on Nick. Nick tries to heal himself up, is the spear gonna land? He's very close range, Ignite goes down. Overpower chooses not to follow, but Nick Definitely coming out behind in that trade. Yeah, very smart play from Overpower. He didn't uh, waste that intervention because, of course, he's looking for that last spear, that last tick of damage that would kill him. 
before he ends up using it, but he did burn his Ignite. Uh, summon a heal still available for Nick. So if they get caught out again, Overpower is one uh, combat summoner down and may not be able to secure the kill. Alex on the pink ward will have to get back to that later. As promised. Well, Gambit were the ones that started it technically yesterday, so <laughs> we'll see how this one progresses throughout the day. So, blue buff. Can Nick get this one? He needs it, that's for sure. Lolex should give him a cross, but we saw this one actually messed up by Fnatic yesterday. Yes, Cyanide accidentally getting that blue buff. Uh, he was in a lease, actually. I think it was a Spiderling yeah. that took that last tick of damage. For me, I think, with this tower going down in the top lane, Rocket should consider swapping Sullivan Vanna to the bottom lane to primarily get presence for the next Dragon. Remember, Dragon was picked up around three and a half, four minutes, and if Rocket have got a, a superior numbers in that area of the map, then they could obviously contest for that objective. We'll see if they agree, and Zazz again. All of that damage from Heaver, but Heaver's got no mana. He's burning through his whole mana pool to try and deny Zazus. Zazus is not that far behind in CS. He's only 200 gold down, which is th the difference of that assist and the dragon. So he hasn't been shut out quite as much as it may look if you look at his HP bar. So overpower back in that mid lane, clearing out the wave. and. Nick, once again, doing a fantastic job keeping up that CS alongside Overpower, so both fairly even. If I look across all the lanes, it's really just the AD carriers that have the lead. Fury ahead of Salavar. Salavar pretty much had his own time in this top lane up against Kavishard for a long period of the game. You can see he's just holding out, keeping that wave. Fury doing exactly the same, but he's making sure the tower does not take the CS, which he just did right there. Right on cue. Triple Doran's ring for Zazas. Really is struggling in that bottom lane. Yeah, he is, but it's also not uncommon for top lane Lulus. I know Soaz in particular, who was one of the biggest uh, players of top lane Lulu, always went triple Dorans uh, into the likes of an Athenes. I think Athenes would be a very smart pickup uh, for Zazz because of all the magic damage from Eve, from Nidalee, from Cog, and from Zyra. Yesterday we seen uh, Fnatic going to Morella Nomicons and foregoing the. Uh, Athenes because they didn't need the MR. They just needed the cooldown reduction, the, M the, the mana region, etc. But we'll have to see how Zazus decides to itemize Vanda. He wants Lolex. He's going to come across. Deathsense is so close. He's going to defend his ground there. He wants that ward. He got it. Gets that ward. He got it. Counters Frog. You know what's worrying for me is the fact that they cheer louder for a ward going down than a tower. Because the tower's an objective in this game. Well, d man calling you guys about out. that. D-Man is calling it's, you guys out. It's not even the English crowd. It's like every crowd. This, this, <laughs> this. It's just a thing. So I just want to say, Heba okay. has landed every single Grasp Moot you've seen uh, in this laning phase. Yankos tries to come in for a gank and instantly gets shut down. Instantly gets rooted in place. So he was doing... He's off to a <laughs> good start. <laughs> Cancelled the attack animation first and time. Kiva does not have strangle points. He's not level six. So take a look at Rocket. <laughs> they have repositioned themselves. They do have Celavan Vanda available in the bottom lane. They also have Yankos available. So they may look to challenge this dragon. But I think they're going to be too late. This is getting melted. Yeah, it's gone. I can only imagine the anger and fury on Reddit right now with you guys. <laughs> well, oh stop, my god! Stop sparking it. Let them be. They love the wards. <laughs> they love the wards. It's all good. Uh, Rocket, good theory. They had the right members in the right area of the map. Too slow to react. Uh, it's it's what we seen yesterday. It's why they took so long to to, to beat Millennium. They were just too Ooh. indecisive in actually starting uh, engages or starting objective fights, and that's why they lost Ooh. that second dragon. Celebo doing well in this one v two. Yeah, they suddenly realizing he's got a little bit more teeth than Zazas has. He turned that straight back around, put the calling onto Fury, and Heva putting some damage down again, just dodging out of that and quite happily to take the five gold every time the plants get thrown in front of him to give himself an extra CS, not that it really counts too much for the goal. As it stands at the moment, lanes very even across the board. CS-wise, it's not too big of an advantage across the board. Zazas has, has actually stepped ahead of Cabo Shard briefly. So we'll see whether that one sticks around. Yankos will get spotted out. There is a ward in that bush, so he's not exactly sneaking in here, which is why we're obviously seeing Lolex making his way down towards the tower. So what I like from Rocket is their vision game is very good. Uh, they do have a number of wards on both the top and bottom half of the map, whereas Gambit, their vision is centralized around Dragon. The fact that they went for such an early Dragon and from knowing uh, the, the regular Gambit plays, they put a lot of emphasis on the objective and their vision tells the same story. Rocket, however, have got the top lane unlocked 
uh, for a moment or two. Ooh, Salvo's taking a lot of poke from Fury. It's the range advantage you do have on Cogmore. We also saw a little tempt at a gank in that mid lane. Rockat starting to start roaming the lanes here. They want to start looking to try and open up Gambit a little bit. And what I like about them is they're sniffing out opportunities. They are using their numbers advantage because they gave up uh, some top lane presence. Zazas was moving with the team in the middle and the bottom. And they were looking for towers. They haven't taken an objective yet, but they have created some opportunities. They have created some damage and they are playing the pressure game. Uh, you know, they're, they're trying to force Gambit to react and then looking for weakness in their armor. We're going to see if they can create an opening in this mid lane, but Son of Us has been given a gift in the bottom. He's got himself a free lane. Look out towards the sweeping lenses being picked up all across. And of course, Rocket trying to get full vision here over Gambit. We saw Fnatic doing the same yesterday. Exactly what I wanted to say. Yesterday, Fnatic, when they played the heavy invade game, they went for four sweeping lenses and a strying orb. We see the same strategy from Rocket. However, they are not as committed to the heavy invade. They are not as committed to the full pressure. You see in the little picture in picture, just a little bit of ward just around the corner. Line of sight is not there, so unfortunately Pink Ward doesn't spot Gambit's ward and has timed out. Summoner's Rift upgrade coming to your game Ooh. soon. Caution, caution. It's on beta test already. It is. It's out there. You guys can uh, test it right now. Out at the moment though, Fury oh. going aggressive. Salavar trying to get some aggression. Didn't expect the two tower hits to do quite so much damage though. Heal was used by Fury though. Yeah, summon spell blown. So again, same story, just Salavar's doing pretty good. He is falling behind in CS to Fury, which is not good because Cogmore will eventually outscale him in terms of sheer damage and of course range and poke. So it's something that Rocket needs to be a little careful of. But as we said, Rocket with all of the shenanigans, all of the movement from three, four minutes ago, they got some vision down and they have found Gambit a little bit out of position. Selva forced Fury away. Nick was out of position in the mid lane and Rocket picked up two quick towers. They did the same yesterday against Millennium. This is where they struggle, getting past those inner towers. We'll see whether they managed to actually rotate and get into position this time around Rocket. Keeping that pressure on, Nick was briefly making his way down south, but already you can see Rocker are backing away from that one. Zaz in the top lane, he should be able to motor through this wave of minions in the top. No problems for him with that glitter lance, although nearly missed it on that one. Well, Zazus hasn't gone back to shop in uh, an extended period of time. He's a, a small CS behind Cabochard, and he's sitting on nearly 2,000 gold. So he's been landing, if you look at Overpower, he's got 3,600 gold. He hasn't gone... Uh, left the mid lane since picking up those Berserker's Greaves. So we're finally going to see what he's actually going to shop, what he's going to itemize towards, and we're obviously going to assume it's going to be towards that Nash's too. So we'll take a look at the items and see what they've caught out, and he has a 2v2. We'll so see whether the Panda can catch anyone out here. Salavar giving chase, and that spear will stop him dead in his tracks. And this is Ooh. what we're expecting to see. Nick has to be on point with his spears. That was very close, Salavar. That was very close indeed. Uh, Selavar may not have been killed by it, but that would have been within inches of his life. And Nick's, Nick's Nidalee is, is very good. You know, he landed some good spears against Fnatic. He's already landed some good ones against Rockat. And I would dare say those spears are going to put a hesitation on Rockat's deeper play. Because if they do go under towers and take too many spears, the shields from Lulu and the heals from Kale can be overrun by back-to-back -back javelin tosses. Sweeping lenses being okay. found out all across the board. This is happening. It's it's carnage, ladies and gentlemen. It's <laughs> to go through. I'm not sure whether or not to. I, to, to I think the camera guys, out. they're feeling pretty safe back there right now. But I don't think they're going to come out of here. That's for sure. Yeah, let's not point out their location. <laughs> let's not point out the location. <laughs> Rocket obviously playing the vision game. 10 seconds till Dragon comes up. The very important thing to note is Rocket are now finally in a position to actually challenge. They were far too late to the second attempt and they will be relying on Zazus' teleport if the fight breaks out soon, but he has actually left that top lane. So we may see Rocket coming with a, a little bit of a pincer move. And as long as Salava doesn't go in too early, they do have the potential to, uh, you know, 
have a fight go their way, but they can't afford to get caught out of position. They're going to go in on Gambit. Oh, they didn't manage to land the lock up, but Lolex has been found out. Oh, he flashed it just at the right time. Overpower caught them all, though. Intervention going down very early. Yankos has gone in, and again, a little bit disjointed Rakan here. Zankos gets bounced in the air by Kavashar, but they just don't have enough damage back and forth. Those spears could lock him up. Death sentence on Nick. He's got next to no mana either. Back and forth action. Nobody going down. Vander, though, has been oh. singled out. The spear catches on. Kavashar gets the slowdown on him. He's going to go down. The flash is not enough to get away. Kavashar picks up the kill. So another kill to Gambit. This should allow them to secure the dragon uncontested. We talked about Rocket and how their initiation power is reliant on a cocoon, a glitter lancer, a death sentence, and they didn't hold Gambit in place for long enough. A good flank by Overpower, but he simply doesn't have the items or the damage to shred through multiple Gambit members yet. So at the end of it, Gamma come out ahead and extend their gold lead ever so slightly. Yeah, a couple of thousand gold on the two support and AD carry. Check this out though. So I like Overpower's positioning. He not only avoids the strangle thorns, but he's got a lot of auto attacks down, but he doesn't have the items to commit to the rest of the fight. Not the greatest of boxes from Vanda from an aggressive standpoint, but it did reduce the um, aggression play from Gambit. They didn't want to chase through that. But I do think that if Rocket want to go for those plays, they need to wait for a death sentence for a cocoon to land. They can't simply open up with culling and hope that Gambit will stick around long enough to take all the damage. Yeah, that's just not going to work out for them, and that's another dragon, actually, for Gambit, which is keeping them very much in this game, keeping them ahead in goal. Pink Ward shows out that wall placement. It's going to be blue buff given across to Nick. Question is, though, will Rockout try and intervene? Overpower finds himself another one. He's going to come around the side there. They're going to try and steal this away. He didn't quite have vision. Well, he did, actually, a ton of light. Yeah. He's the scrying orb to get vision of that one, but wasn't close enough to land the skill shot. Yeah, I think Rocket need to find um, some slightly better dancing shoes this game because they have taken a lot of spears already, and Nick hasn't even hit... They've taken lessons from Yellowstar. A big... <laughs> hasn't hit a big power spike. He's still working himself towards that death cap. Only a thousand gold with Nick at the moment, so he's still a while away from having those very high impact spears. But he's hit multiple targets onto the likes of Selva, Vanda, etc. And that's allowing them to uh, reduce the threat of Rocket. Rocket haven't pushed past that front tower for the last five or six minutes. And considering how active they were in the first 15 minutes, it is quite a change. It, 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 it's Gambit regaining some control of the tempo. Okay, so let's talk about late game, because these guys are in 20 minutes. Obviously moving into the mid game, late game. Of course we know Kale's going to be a beast. Cogmore's going to be a beast as well, though. He can counteract it quite well if he can stay away. But what protection has he got? Not a lot. It all comes down to positioning. If Gambit are going to engage a fight, they need to ensure that Lolex has a good flank and the strangle, strangle thorns and grasping roots from Heaver Zyra are going to be imperative to keeping Nidalee and Cogmore alive. If um, Rocket are able to be mobile, use Repel, use the Whimsy from Lulu, use the Speed Boost from Kale, and get over that Strangle Thorns, that's when Gambit gets into trouble. So for me, it's all about positioning. Both teams have the damage and the ability to uh, completely deal with their opponents, but only, only, only if Gambit can actually flank correctly and delay Rocket from hitting the carries. Rocket seem to have hit a bit of a hard rock right now. They're doing the same thing. Three times running, pushed in towards that mid lane, realize they're up against Gambit, can't push through, everybody backs away again. On the same token, it's not the end of the world for Rocket because they want Lulu and Kale both to scale. Yeah. They want both of them to get more items, ideally looking for Yankos to get even more tanky, maybe get himself towards a, you know, Randy and Zoman or something similar to stick to the back line more. And I think both teams have got very good late game scaling. And it's just going to come down to who can outposition their opponents. For now, it's Kabashard making the plays. Yeah, nobody dealing with Kabashard, nobody reacting to it. Zazas had gone down the bottom to push that wave, and that's already been cleared out by Fury. That's a simple tower for Gambit, the first one of the game, I might add, that they've picked up. And, you know, with the Dragon Gold they've already got, and the control they've got of the Dragon area, it's actually a very positive position for Gambit to be in. And Rockout, I think. I think Rocket needs to just look for more proactive picks. You know, if you get Elise or Thresh onto single targets of Gambit, they will go down. And the key is just encouraging Gambit to, to be in lanes where Rocket can dive, where Rocket can find those picks. Lulu, we've seen yesterday playing somewhat of a split push role, can do fairly well in that role uh, because of the movement speed and the safety that Wild Growth gives you. So you 
play a little bit of a bait, let Zazus push a lane out. As somebody comes to deal with Zazus, Yankos, Overpower, or Vanda are then there to help out, try to secure a kill, and try to uh, mitigate the map control that Gamma currently have. Spears continuing to flow through as Nick switches into Kuga, clears out the wave. Lolex looking to start trying to make some inroads into the rock at base. They haven't really touched this middle tower. That's maybe the next focus that they want to get towards that bottom turret as well. Standing still, but a lot of Gambit members coming around here. Fury gets some free time on towards it. He certainly will do a lot of damage. Yeah, he, he certainly will. And I think Gambit are quite well aware of their uh, reduced wave clear than Rocket. So if Rocket do eventually begin sieging, with proper vision around the flanks, so to deny a Lolex uh, fight start, I think Rocket could probably force Gambit's hands, you know, try playing through the jungle, rotate from mid inner to bottom inner. And that might be a way for Rocket to encourage uh, mistakes from Gambit. Dragon's respawning, and I think Gambit, they're too split up to have the superior positioning. And it looks like Rocket definitely want to contest. So while this has been happening, while they've been pushing Dilly Dally, doing nothing for 10 minutes, basically, every single time, Fury gets to the bottom, gets himself an entire wave. Dragon's going to be up in 20 seconds. He's actually gained a big CS advantage over Selva in this time. He was behind at one point. Now, Gambit moving back in. Dragon up in 14 seconds. They've got to be careful they don't give up the mid tower here, though, because Overpower's pushing them in. Yeah, it looks like Rocket are playing the lane game. Trading a tower for a Dragon, I think, is very smart for Rocket because it opens up access to the jungle and the inner turret. The Gambit have peeled away. They've come to defend. Let's see if uh, Rocket stick around after the minion wave dies. Well, the spear doesn't land. They do get a big chunk of damage onto that tower. Gambit slow to react on that one. And they ping back straight on towards the tower. Minion wave has been pushed out. I've got a feeling if they go back towards that dragon, Rocket is going to go straight back in there and take that tower down. Yeah, they really can. And of course, if Yankos is the one that starts off tanking the turret, he can just drop the aggro thanks to his repel. Their centers, they've caught Lolex. He's gone in! He's gone in towards it. Lolex is going to take all that front-loading damage, but he's actually safe for now, and he gets that big shield going off towards him. Overpower, intervention saves his life. He was being focused on with Selva. Selva's got to be careful. He doesn't get singled out of the side. He's away from his team, and everybody again steps away. But this time, Rocket are in a much stronger position. So, so important for Gambit that that Strangle Force is able to stop every single member of Rocket. Selva ran around the left-hand side of the lane because he didn't want to get caught by that Strangle Force. And we talked about how difficult it is for Gambit to kill people through the wild growth and the intervention. Rocket, Get away. I actually think if Rocket had stuck around, Gambit had the damage to still finish that out. Nick was untouched, Fury was untouched, and they'd force Zazus and Overpower low and to blow all of their ultimates. Gambit has started Dragon. This is There's risky. not a lot of ultimates available. It has to be a pick for Rocket to contest. Very risky, but they get the Dragon down very quickly. Nick, no mess in there. You could tell who was making the calls. Instantly ran towards it, but it may well have lost in this middle turret. Overpower, he's managed to heal himself back up there. He becomes around. Oh, he's caught by a cocoon. Death just misses the cocoon. I don't know how the hell he missed that. But nevertheless, the tower goes down. Yeah, unfortunately, not going to connect. They're not over yet. Fury wants Vanda. He's going to try and catch on towards him. Nick's coming through. Spear is going to be ready in a moment. He's going to switch out of Cougar Ball. Oh. Yankos, there's minions, the spiders are just about holding him up there, and a Cullen coming through as well. Spear doesn't land again, Cabochard giving chase on towards Yankos, he goes towards that Baron pit. Meanwhile, the rest of the team, the Spear dodged out there, Fury's been caught out, Overpower's gonna lock him down! He gets him down. Meanwhile, Yankos did get taken out by Cabochard, it's a one-for-one -one trade. And they're gonna keep on pushing. One-for-one one at the end of the day, it was Overpower with a very aggressive Flash Ignite. That got, oh, that's oh, another one. Oh. Nick, with the homing spears, Gambit are going to keep chasing. Oh, he dumps those on towards him, but it's not enough there. Good play from Vanda, dodges out of the spear. Salabar's going to get caught with the slow. Nick's going to look to land another spear. That minion wave is just defending him for now. Can he throw it towards him? He's going to dodge out in the tower. Can they push on this mid turret? They've got the minions with them. Gambit do have the minion wave. Salabar's still fairly healthy with flash and heal, so he may stick around. If he gets caught by the knockup of Cabochard, he's in trouble. He's gonna get caught out, he's gonna get in towards it. Intervention goes down from Overpower, locks on towards him. Lonex gets on towards Salabar's not gonna be focused. Overpower will! Overpower wow. will one! And Gabashan! Oh my god! Overpower gets two down! Salabar clears it out! Wow! That they really so should have gone for the tower. If Overpower had not gone for the Runan's Hurricane and his second item before finishing that, um, uh, uh, the, the, rather, if he hadn't got the Runan's Hurricane as quickly as he did, he wouldn't have been able to get all of that AoE damage. He was hitting so many targets and shredding them down. Gambit overcommit to the dive, and the intervention was massive. Rocket get the kills, they're gonna secure this Baron uncontested and have a very solid stranglehold on the game. You can see here, that's just how close he's got. Just take a look at how many auto attacks Overpower is hitting. So, we're in slow-mo, 
Where are the Runon's Hurricane Bolts? And the backline Celebar. That's just a double auto attack. Melting through them. And very, very well played. Um, baited from Overcome. He waited for Gambit to dive onto Celebar and threw that intervention down. So first Baron of the game goes to Rockhead. Despite the fact they've lost four of those dragons, it does mean that the gold is still incredibly close. Gambit not out of this one by a long shot. Just over committing, as you mentioned there. A little too long. They need to get themselves some vision down though. Rock out have good ward control in and around that Baron Pit area and they could push forward now they have this buff on. And this is something that happened yesterday when Mima got multiple kills. He got a few kills at the early to mid game stage of the game, got an item uh, crescendo and then just began to dominate the game. Overpowers already had a good flank on Gambit's positioning and was unable to kill anybody because he didn't have the items. Now he has the items. He just picked up a Void Stop after that last back, and with the regen and the stats from Baron, you see how quickly he heals that Spear, uh, the, the Javelin toss-up. So Rocket now should look to Siege. Oh, yeah. Back on topic. Rocket didn't Siege yesterday, and they've got all of the tools they, they need to deal with Nidalee. They need to just ensure they have the vision to deal with Lolex and don't overcommit for Stranglethorns of Heaver. Those are the, the big worries, the big concerns for them because Cabo Shard has only got a Spirit Visage. He's not super, super tanky at the station time. He will get melted by all of the damage sources of Rocket. Absolutely need to make sure they don't get picked off as well. It's a dangerous move in the jungle area as Rocket make their way towards this bottom inner turret. They could siege it out if they wanted, I feel. They're not too risky though. Good wave clear from Gambit. They should be able to keep these minions at bay. Rocket are going to have to make a concerted effort. You can see Celevar trying to push in there, but kind of on his own. As Celevar has been doing a few times this game, uh, he's definitely been going a little bit Rambo, but it's working for him. You know, he played aggressive on Corky yesterday. He's playing aggressive on his Lucian, and he's doing well. Even that small CS deficit he had behind Fury is now obviously mitigated. And Look at the positioning. Rocket are pushing mid lane and bottom lane. They're playing the minion waves and they're trying to force him. Oh, they've caught Nick! Oh, they've hooked him in. He's going to have to bounce away from this one. Stranglethorn's forced out. That's going to bounce Bounder in the air. They've got no follow through. The spear does land on him, though. That Rocket could push on towards the tower here. They've got a good minion wave. It has to be a push now for Rocket. They should know the cooldown of that Stranglethorn's, and this window of opportunity is very, very juicy for them. There's minions middle, there's minions top, and Rocket can have their pick of the litter in which lane they want to push next. Yeah, Overpower heads straight up towards the top. The rest of the team go towards the middle. They can clear the waves out and keep it pushing with this Baron buff around about. 80 seconds left on it, still counting down. Gambit actually going to look. They're going to try and single out Overpower. They can see if they can 3v1 him. This is going to be scary. He does have Intervention available. Let's see how early he uses it. Kavashard, Bloodwell came up just at the right time. Pops the ultimate down. Intervention goes down. Can he take him all out before? He may be able to. Kavashard's low, but it's not going to be enough. The tower damage is there. Kavashard takes him out. The rest of the Rocket, though, they're closing in towards this one. Gambit have to back away from the tower. Yeah, they really do. If Rocket managed to secure the tower, it will be worth it. A kill, or a death, rather, for the objective is a trade they should take any day of the week. Unfortunately for Overpower, he just took too much tower damage, and that was a good spear from Nick once again to defend a objective for Gambit. Yeah, that's one spear. Well, stop that attack in its tracks. Baron buff about to wear out. Dragon will be up in 18 seconds. Let's see where the Gambit make the move. They look like they're going to try and push out here. So for Gambit, they need to make sure they catch Rocket and kill kill somebody maybe before Overpower could get on them. Overpower was in a 1v3 eventually, oh, but he melted, he melted through Cabo Shard's HP and Lolex's HP Look at this. while under pressure. They've noticed it. They've just walked past, straight past two pink wards. Nobody noticed it. Immediately, Rocket responding, going straight back towards that top lane. They're going to get it. Yeah, they're going to... They should, it should just be a trade. Uh, Heva needs to be very careful. He shouldn't stick around. The tower killers. Salva is there as well. So objective for objective. Five out of five dragons for Gambit. And it's still keeping them minutely in the lead as far as gold is concerned. They are four towers down. If Gambit ever gets some map presence past their own river, they can actually pull ahead in, in terms of uh, total gold. But for the time being, it's really been Rocket. They have actually played a lot more decisively and a lot more aggressively than we've seen yesterday at the same stage of the game. And the problem was you saw three members, 3v1 on Overpower, and just how much damage he turned around while tanking the turret. He nearly took two of those down, which is going to become a problem. That Rapidon's death cap is not too far away. And he's almost hit level 18. Highest level on the map by 
some way, two levels ahead of everyone else. So for Rockat, the, the difficulty now actually becomes even greater. To break through an inhibitor turret while dealing with the Zyra, as well as you know the Voidus from Cogmore and the, the, the Nidalee Spears, is very difficult. Rocket need to force Gambit's hands, maybe playing the Baron Dance, um, maybe trying to pull Gambit towards them. If they can bait out a Evelyn ultimate or a Zyra ultimate, that's the key to going for a potential tower dive or going to, to push a tower down. While all of Gambit's uh, abilities are available, it's very risky to get through that line. And in order for Rocket to do that, they need to play exactly as they did for those last two inner turrets. Vision in the jungle and force Gambit's hand. It looks like Rocket are trying to set that up with a couple of deep wards around the Baron pit as it's a minute away from spawning. Screen orb views there, and actually Yakos has been separated. Shield That's a bit late. too late on that one, Saz. That gets heal off from Overpower, though. And Yankos trying to catch on towards Lolex. We'll clear out that vision again. Yankos trying to get in towards it. Cocoon will land on Fury, won't get followed up by Rock out, but this is a tense, tense moment. Remember, both these teams equal on gold right now. No buff bonuses. This is a straight up brawl. Yeah, and Gambit can continue to stall this out because the minions are working in their favor. Both top and bottom are pushing against Rocket until Overpower just moved to deal with that top lane. So Gambit were, for the time being, happy to stall that one out. And again, they're not looking to have a straight up, like, dive onto Overpower. They either have to pop Overpower instantly, or they're just going to sneak a tower because Rocket are out of position stealing a red buff. That's yeah. not a great trade. Yeah, they went for red buff for a tower. They may be looking to try and get around them, but Gambit actually pretty clear in their decision making there. Just pushing straight through that mid lane, gets himself the third tower of the game. They're now 6 3 in turrets. Baron, though, that's going to be up in 12 seconds' time, and that's almost certainly a focus objective for Rocket. Let's see if Gambit can get some vision in there. You can see Zazas keeping that pit clear. And of course, Baron is up. So Gambit have got vision on it, and well aware of that one. And I do think the Baron Bait is, is the safest call for Rocket. The threat of Gambit's team comp is, is very great. They're even on gold at 33 minutes. They're, yeah, they're down in towers, but thanks to the, 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 the fantastic dragon control that Gambit have had, they're keeping themselves relevant. I do still think Cabochard needs to get more tanky. He's currently just sitting on that Giant's Belt, and he's got a mixture of stats, but you contrast that to Zazas, who's got his Morellan Omicron and Deathcap, those shields and wild growth are very, very effective at this early stage in the game. He's got 172 magic on this. Not too bad. Not at all. Consider most of the damage will be coming from Zazas and Overpower, but of course, Salivar can just rip him apart. The key problem is that Sal Over Overpower's going to be shredding all of his resistances, and with the damage amplification Kale can also have, it's through shredding those resistances, it means Cabochard needs all of the support of Lolex as well. And just look at, at Rocket, they keep trying to play this vision game. They keep trying to get um, superiority around the Baron Pit, and they're not forcing Gambit's hands until now. Zazus is split pushing in the bottom lane. He's going to try and make Gambit decide, defend bottom tower or go for Baron. And Rocket have to be very decisive in this 4v5. Cabochard fancied his chances with Overpower there. He forced straight up into his face. Has stepped away this time. He's going to have to hold out. And they may try and flank around here. Yankos was coming up the side there. Nick is out of position, landing the spears still, though, onto Yankos. And Rockat do force Gambit to go back into defensive position. Yeah, and Nidalee with that pounce is so difficult to lock down. And unfortunately for Rockat, they keep eating spears. Every time we look at them, it's just tink, tink, tink. And Nick keeps connecting. And I do think it's going to come down to wards. Um, I would argue at this stage in the game, it would be worthwhile for Zazas to sell one of those Dawn Rings, stock Ooh. up on four or five wards, and just keep playing this, this vision game. Gambit had vision there. They saw Rockout back away. They could quickly try and rush this Baron here. They've got Teleport up on Kabashar. They're actually just going to use it to try and flank in and clear vision. They could have started that Baron quickly. They could have, but I think without Kabashar there, it may have taken a little longer. He does have Teleport, of course, but you don't want your Teleport to start a Baron, you're 100% certain. Cogmore and Kabashar probably could have shredded that very, very quickly. But again, it's just a vision game. It is all about wards. It is all about who can spot their opponents more than yesterday. We did actually see more wards placed, more wards killed uh, than an average LCS day of four games. And ironically, it's, it's Gambit and Kabashar with a successful split push because Zazus, 
he didn't extend f past the, the inner turret line. That tower's going down, and it's going to be another one. Kabashar taking this, and Rocket doing zero to react to this. They want Lolex pick. stepping off the side there. You can see they're going to start off the Baron. They're getting good vision from the Cogmore ultimate. Kabashar continuing to push. It's going to keep throwing these spears. They're going to force Kabashar to teleport in here. They're going to have to go for this He one, can Kabashar. teleport to the plant if he wants to, and he's doing it. He's coming into the plant. Right? Vander's going to be the man at the front there. Lolex flashes out. Intervention used on Vander. Gambit are going to force him out of the pit. The spear comes through, catches on Vander once again. So Gambit take themselves a turret and defend the Baron. Intervention and wild growth on the same target, which was the support. Gambit did not commit further past that strangle fawns. So it was able to zone Rocket out, and because of Gambit's positioning, they're going to get the mid inner turret as well. Rushing straight in the mid there, Kabashad happy to tank this one through. Cookie coming in, the minions will join this one. Fury putting as much damage down as he can. Rocket finally react to this one, but Gambit are slowly but surely clawing an advantage in this game. Fast reaction, it was interesting Ooh. to see Kabashad tanking the tower up and not actually going to auto attack it. He had his dash and his slow if he wanted to escape but instead have only relied on Fury. So 50% of the HP down, Dragon has respawned, Gambit have got better positioning for it, and it looks like Rocket are toying with the idea of Baron. They don't have a massive amount of vision, and ultimates are still missing uh, on some key members of Gambit, whereas Rocket have got all except for the box available. Nick needs to tank this one out. Lolex is very low, he's not getting any regen. Rocket are gonna start this one up again. Nick is not there, there's no spears following through on this one. Gambit may well have given it up. You can see they're trying to desperately to keep them away, get in vision, Fury again, overpower waiting in the pounce on towards Kabashad again. They tried to peel off. They've not finished yet. Baron taking down to 2,000, 3,000 hit points just off the side there. Death Sentence does not land. 4,000 hit points. Rock up, peel away once again. And Gambit, defensive duties hold strong. Yeah, the poke from Gambit is very, very high. Uh, Blades of Torment from Aatrox, the spear from Nick eventually, and the poke from Fury was working in their favor. And if Heaver had had Stranglethorns, I think they would have looked to engage. Rocket trying to force the objective, knowing that uh, Zyra's Stranglethorns is not there, was the smart move. They predicted the dragon, they responded with Baron, but they simply don't have enough damage. And of course, Overpower was running defensive duty. Because Overpower was not on Baron, you could argue if he was hitting it, they may have been able to rush it down. Instead, Rocket played a little safe, and nothing nothing gained, nothing lost. Infinity Edge picked up by Fury there. Big upgrade there, had a lot of gold stacked on there. That's a lot of damage now that Fury will put out. And honestly, he's been untouched in the majority of these fights. He's been sitting off the side because Kabashar has been getting in their faces as well as Lolex, and they've kind of been the focus targets. So Gambit, honestly, for me right now, I'm looking pretty strong in this game. Completely agree. And in our pregame, we said if Gambit can be uh, more decisive in the late game than Rocket, they legitimately can win this. Rocket did not look convincing as they didn't look concerted in their decision making. And we're seeing the same things here. There's hesitation, there's a little bit of mixed calls, and it feels like, it feels like Rocket aren't sure how to get onto those inhibitor turrets. They've done a good job of getting all of the inner turrets. They've had pretty good uh, jungle camp vision and control, but they haven't touched a dragon. And it looks like Rocket have said we don't want dragons, because they haven't contested at all. Well, Salavar once again goes in, pink ward down, clear the wards. The Baron, not touched. Nick not landing the spear this time. Overpower clears out that top wave, gives his position away, and Gambit trying to take advantage. Remember, they took a lot of hit points off this mid turret already. Vanda's going to come around. Salavar going to try and keep that wave clear. Kabashar can tank it if they want. So I've been talking about how Rocket can push past inhibitor turrets. For Gambit to do it, they need to get Lolex and Kabashar to flank and engage. You know, once once Lolex and Kabashar start a fight, Heaver Strangle Thorns can be the tool that ends it. That can knock Rocket up. We do see all of the ultimates available for Gambit, and they're trying to again, it's just vision. They've denied it from Rocket, try to force Rocket's hands, but Zaz has made no movement of uh, of uh, no movement of leaving the bottom lane, so I think calculated decision from Gambit that uh, they weren't going to commit for the objective. You know, despite the fact that they keep clearing there's visions, there's wards are rattling through and they still, they have to keep vision because they have to see where those wards are going. Zazas is doing a good job on this bottom wave though, he's going to keep on pushing. Gambit are trying to call his bluff here, pushing down towards the inner turret of their own. They can get this turret down, but Zazas, he's going to get a lot of damage on this. Yes, he's got a Lich Bane built up. He could have also teleported behind the members of Gambit. Gambit now peel away. They've uh, not decided to commit to the inner turret. And Zazas, he's sticking to that turret. He's going to get this one for absolutely nothing. Zazas takes down the inhibitor turret. Gambit, slow to react. Kabashad finally back there. He's going to stop the inhibitor going down. 
but they have opened up Gambit's base, and that was a little bit sloppy play. Somebody needed to go back a little bit earlier. Of course, no teleport for Kabashar, which is why he was reluctant to go there. Trying to call Zaza's bluff did not work out for them. You can see right now, Fury has got a lot of damage once he needs it, once he gets it, once he can load on them, but Overpower is becoming a scary beast right now. Fear. Once we see him actually get involved in the next fight, which has been a while, by the way. We haven't yes. seen these guys fight for a long time. There's going to be a lot, a lot more damage picked up by the, both teams. The scary thing for Fury is his positioning just has to be so, so immaculate. If Lulu gets a Glitter Lance on him or a Cocoon or a Death Sentence from release the Thresh, there's, there's no, you know, save me buttons. You're going to have a big heal from Nick, of course, if he's in range. But outside of that, no intervention, no wild growth. So Fury needs to make sure he avoids getting caught and uses that Bioacan Barrage range to its absolute maximum. In order for Gamba to win those fights, it really is dependent on him to stay alive and to keep attacking after the wild growth and after the intervention have uh, worn out. Hourglass picked up by Nick, that's also uh, relevant because it can afford him all of that safety. He can mitigate some of the time on those Righteous Fury swings. Kavashard, it's going to be an interesting duel. He's got a lot of MR, he's got Randuance. And we'll see if he can stick to Zaz. I think that's going to be the key. He needs to make sure he's the slow from Wild Growth and Glitter Lance don't nope. negate him. <laughs> Do not want, I believe, is the terminology. I think only in England you hear fight, fight, fight. It's a, it's a playground term that's uh, managed to find its way into League of Legends Wembley Arena, which is impressive in itself. But we'll see how this works out. Again, vision. <laughs> it's all vision from Rockat. They simply, they simply haven't got deep enough wards and they're running very, very scared. So, what are they going to do? That's the question. 43 minutes I've been asking myself something, that. Something, something I'm hoping good. they're going to do something sooner or later. 6-5. High kill game after that challenger match, that's for sure. It's just indecisiveness. Gambit haven't tried to flank. I don't know if they fully understand how even they are. Maybe they feel like they're further behind thanks to the map play that Rockets had. And for Rocket, they're simply too scared of Gambit's comp to push into their territory. Rocket's vision has been suffering. They've spent more time in denying Gambit's wards in Baron Pit than they have in gaining a foothold in Gambit's jungle. So both teams have just said, this is my half of the map. You stay on yours, I'll stay on mine. And maybe one day we'll, we'll let this tug of war actually become a real fight. Nobody wants to lose the tug of war, that's the problem. Overpower is going to wait in the bush. He may find Heaver, actually. He's going to take a peek. No, just going to use a plant. And back away. So I would dare say it's at this point in the game that Rockat's mindset shifts from only focusing on the game to thinking about how long it took them to close out yesterday and how 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 important Ooh, it is to man. beat a solo queue team. Gambit are miles away sneaky. and this is getting shredded. Yeah, this is sneaky. There's only going to be Heaver nearby. He's going to get vision now. It's too late. That's too late. Rockat getting the Baron. Yeah, it's Strangle Thoughts, maybe. Nope. Now, if Overpal had been on the Baron oh. earlier, oh. if Overpal had been on the Baron earlier instead of trying to zone out Gambit, that could have happened about six, seven, eight minutes ago. But because Overpal had decided to play the zoning game when they were pulling Gambit towards them, it means the Baron wasn't there. Rocket secure their second Baron of the game. They did a decent siege on the last Baron they had, but now they have to overcome Gambit. They know Stranglethorns is down. They know it's not available, and it's not going to be available for at least another minute and a half. So please, Rocket, try to siege up these, these either bottom lane inhibitor or inhibitor turrets because you've got openings available to you. Well, gold continues to be fairly even. This dragon will even things up. Give me another chunk for Gamut. That's another dragon secured. They've been on point with dragons, that's for sure. Fancy points secured. Seven out of seven now. This game is reaching the 46 minute mark and no sign of aggression from either team just yet. None whatsoever. Rocket beat uh, Rocket's victory yes, was 47 minutes. They look to extend uh, this match, and it does look to be a push. Rocket have grouped up. There is an exposed inhibitor, which of course makes life a little easier in dealing with Zyra. And finally, they've moved up. Also, look, Overpower is pushing middle. Overpower is pushing middle, so Gambit are going to be able to play multiple lanes if they go that route. Rocket. Finally going to push the open exposed inhibitor in the bottom lane. A lot to let back away. No tower there. Can they get on towards it? In theory they can, 
how many spears does Nick need to land to push Rock out back? That's the real question. There is regen from Baron, there's heals from Kale. Ooh, that's a big spear. The heal is not necessarily uh, evening it up. And Rocket have to get in range of this turret, but the minion waves are being killed very, very quickly. So look, Rocket just playing it super safe. The cleave clear that Kappa Shot has. Fight, fight! I'm with you guys! Come on, fight! Finally, hopefully, we're gonna get a fight here. Yangos has to land one of those cocoons. That will start everything off. There's he the got cocoon! It. Are they that's coming in? Big, and no! That's the whole. But it's Kappa Shot! They don't want Kappa Shot! That's not the target they were looking for. Vanna takes damage from Fury. He's gonna take Ooh. another spear. As well, and that's Rocket going to back out of the base. So the question was, how many spears did it need to connect? Two, I believe, was the number. Unfortunately, Vander not able to lock down Nick, and that means Rocket are not going to commit. And you can't blame them. You really can't. You don't want to jump into a fight against Strangleforce. It's just that simple. Joe said it yesterday. You don't get points for finishing flashy or finishing fast. You only get a win. Winning. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad you clarified that, Drew. Yeah, thank, I, thank I realize I'm like, where, where am I, I going? going? Don't know, do not know. Yankos lands the cocoons, Kabashad again, not the man you're looking for. And again, Fury, a single shot there, shredding almost a thousand hit points off Yankos. So, interesting story with hashtag cool story bro moment. There are more dragons secured in this game than any other game in the summer split here in the LCS, and all of them have been, been secured by Gambit. Oh, that middle turret almost down. Overpower's been sneaking in every time. Heals himself off. There's buying time for the rest of Rocket down the bottom to get more damage they on the Evita. Finally, they get on towards it. Gambit have to start reacting. The middle turret is now also very, very low. Rocket is going to roll on rounding towards this middle turret. It only takes another hit. Spear lands on Salavar. May slow him down briefly. The Gambit now, they have five men defending the mid. Look at this top turret, though. You can see minions doing the job for Gambit. That is a massive amount of minions. That's going to secure the tower, and Gambit are going to reply. Rockout have got a lot of damage on that mid, mid turret, uh, mid inhibitor turret. And with super minions bottom, after four waves of minions pushing in, that will give them the tools to continue the siege once Baron wears off. It doesn't have the longest of times, and actually, I think it did just time out yeah. a moment ago. They use the entirety of Baron to take down an undefended inhibitor. Hey, but it worked. That's what matters. It did Objective work. Objective secured. That's that's true. 49 minutes now in no one's, this game. No one's dealt with a top lane minion wave. For Gambit, it's going to continue pushing to the inhibitor. And Ooh. Rocket just keep eating spears. Veggie, get these guys some dancing lessons. How confident do they feel? Kabashar can teleport to that wave. Take that inhibitor down in seconds. Without a team fight victory, I don't know if he will. It's a risky play. If Kabashar were to make that, it would cost them their middle inhibitor. Oh, but look at the damage. It's not doing it. There's Siege Minions there. It's only just gone down. Come on, Kabashar. You can do it, buddy. Oh, Rocket finally recalling. It, it's a little late. I mean, 50, 60% of their tower's HP is already shredded. They're pushing down the mid. They're going to take the inner turret. Lolex and Fury, they're going to push on towards this one. They should be able to get across, but they don't feel confident enough to do it. And they're back away. Indecisive play from both of these teams. Rocket, Rocket had no idea really what they were doing in that middle lane. They backed away so, so late. They ended up losing the inner turret. They ended up losing 60-70% uh, HP on that inhibitor turret. Baron's worn off. Kabashad's done a good job of, of controlling these super minions bottom lane. And it, it's just going to be a matter of who makes the biggest mistake in the next few minutes because neither team is forcing their opponents to lose. It's going to be who gets caught out or who makes a mistake because teams are playing to lose, they're not playing to win. Super minions are still pushing down that bottom lane, don't forget. Rockat are reacting, they're going to move in, they're going to get their positional advantage. Baron will be up in a minute's time along with the Dragon. Let me, let me deliver that line correctly. Mm -hmm. They're playing to not lose, not playing to win. That's the correct thing I wanted to say. That's good. Yeah. Glad you cleared that up. Yeah, I had to. I, I was like, hang on a second. I'm confused. It's still even in gold. The 377,243rd ward killed today between Rocket and Gambit. Please cry for them. Many a ward has been manufactured. It's good business for the ward makers. That is for sure. It's literally the only thing that's happened for 30 minutes. Everybody hitting max items, even the supports are starting to stack out. You can see that Leandrius was picked up a while ago for Heva. Oh, go overpower, go. Uh -oh. He's found Lolex. Lolex is dead. He's not getting out of that one. Oh, he's he away. Anything to the Delphin? No. Nick's now going to get caught out here. Salavar goes.
goes in. That was all they required. Just a little bit of vision in the jungle. It wasn't to be. And Rock out push on in. So the middle inhibitor turret is low on HP, but there are minions in the top lane. So keep in mind, if Rocket get this one, they can roll down to the middle lane and try to set up another objective. Super minions are pouring in the bottom lane. Rocket, they're going to commit. Can they get caught out? Fury catching on towards Vanda, putting a lot of damage down towards him, but that is only the support. Meanwhile, Salava putting the damage back on Kabashard. They're going to push in towards this inhibitor turret. Now, super minions on the Nexus area as well. They keep on pushing through. Rocket, can they close the game out or will they step away again? That's a big spear onto Salava. The rest of Rocket are on the inhibitor. Quick shield on towards him. Oh. Goes in. That's got the spear. He was caught out. He's only just respawned. Triangle Thoughts goes down. Banner is going to escape this one. Fury wants the chase, but nobody's with him. Fury has to step away. Shepard goes in. He's got the plug on the bayball. Fury can he land the damage down? No, they're going to mitigate it very well. Kamashad goes back up. Overpower oh, comes to the side. He just bleeds his way through Gamut. And they just drop like fly. They do manage to get a kill with the <laughs> passive there at the end. The Rocket and Clinics finish the game off here. Can they push on through? I think they can. They've got the numbers, they've got the damage, as long as they don't eat the spears. Rocket after 52 minutes, playing this one by the numbers. All don't three inhibitors are that. down, and I think... Oh, how brave are they? You dare, bro. Celebrate's going in. They're Zaz on the Nexus turret. zazz has got teleport available. He's gone back to buy overpass in there. Salavar's going aggressive. The Nexus turrets will fall. 53 minutes into this game, Rocket will finally close out Gambit in what has been the longest, most passive game of League of Legends in a while. That is definitely the case. Rocket 4-0. Back-to-back -back weeks of 2-0 records. Four wins on a row now for Rocket. They actually have the highest win streak still in the European LCS. They climb their way up the table. How oh, high did they go? Well, it wasn't flashy, but it was finished. That's for damn sure. And it came down to the fact that Rocket finally had aggressive positioning. They managed to put themselves in a spot where they could take Gambit out. And Lolex was unfortunate to uh, run into members of Rocket, but it just took so long to create that opportunity, so long to be in that position. That was definitely a long one. Gambit did a good job of keeping them at bay there. I think Nick and his team of subs will be happy. They tried to keep them at bay. Just wasn't a long one, but they delayed. I mean, that's a 52-minute game against Rocket, a nearly 50-minute game against Fnatic. What is going on in Europe right now? If there's anything that we can take away from the games that we've seen this week from Gambit is that Nick on Nidalee is a monster. His spears are fantastic. Yes. They are absolutely great. That has to be a ban-worthy champion against other teams. And Rocket and many European teams, I'm actually going to go out there and say, because even Fnatic yesterday took a long time to finish with a great lead, need to figure out how to break the inner line of turrets and the inhibitor line of turrets. I really feel like Europe is a region when you contrast it to the likes of Korea, to the likes of North America, do struggle in the mid to late game decision making. And it's something that we continue to see across a multitude of teams. Yeah, absolutely. Definitely seem to have a few issues in that department. For now, though, we're going to see what they have to say themselves. Shox is standing by on stage. He's ready to talk to Rockat's Vanda. Thank you very much, D-Man. And the crowd having an applause for you, Vander, here, because obviously another victory coming in for Rockat. But as the casters actually mentioned, you guys were ahead, but then the decision making in the mid game do we go for Baron, do we not go for Baron? It seemed kind of hard, so tell us what was going on there. Yeah, so uh, at the moment it's pretty hard to just uh, rush Baron because you have to control waves really good to do this safe. Uh, that's why it takes a uh, really long uh, time to take national, and you can see this in both uh, European or Korean games even. The Baron dances are long in this patch. So you guys are 4-0, you did close it out despite these uh, issues. Um, how has Veggie being in the house helped you guys? Because it seems like you guys are on top of everything now, you know what is going wrong. How has it helped you personally? Well, I think we didn't play really good this game. We should have done much better. We didn't, co we didn't play as good as uh, last week, for example, or yesterday. Maybe just a bad day. But yeah, I think Veggie definitely helped, uh, helped us a lot, uh, especially in macro game, uh, like pushing towers and uh, controlling the objectives. Yeah, but all in all, 4-0, and oh, very good. A good showing from you guys here. And what is it like to play on this stage, a 2-0 and oh in front of this crowd? That's pretty sweet. Yeah, yeah the crowd is amazing here. It's... Uh, 
it's really loud, as you can hear, and uh, in the game, it's really awesome to play. Yeah, absolutely. Well, thank you very much, and congratulations. Thank you, thank you very much. Well, as for us, we're going to take a quick break, but when we come back, it is the Battle of the Brits as SK Gaming takes on the Super Hot Crew, and we'll be breaking down this game a little further, so don't go anywhere. I'm farting. What? 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 Intervention goes down from Overpower, locks on towards him. Lurnix gets on towards Salamar's not going to be focused. Overpower will! Oh, wow! Oh, what? And Gamma Shot! 